Kia ora tata katoa. My name is Paul Spoonley and I'm at Massey University. And for some time, we've been researching the changing labour market and jobs in New Zealand. And we've been thinking about the sort of education and training that is needed in this new environment. So I wouldn't mind sharing with you some of the things that we think are important and which might guide you in terms of your decisions as you think about leaving secondary school. I want a job. Um, and what does that mean in the 2020s? It's, it's actually quite difficult to know what sort of jobs are going to be available in the future. And you'll see in a moment uh, why we think this is the case. So as you think of the options for you or your daughter, uh, it, it is quite difficult. So please do try and get the best information you can and the Westlake Girls staff will be able to help you with that. The one thing that uh, obviously has preoccupied our lives over the last two years is COVID-19. And I'm afraid that the COVID-19 impacts are going to go on for some time. We know that there are industries that are going to be hard hit, that are have changed forever. Um, we've seen things like the, uh, the great re resignation that's been occurring in the United States. And there are all sorts of impacts of COVID-19. So I just need to preface what I'm about to say by acknowledging the very significant changes that COVID-19 has made to our world. Our job market, our jobs have been changing significantly for some time. Nearly three quarters, over three quarters of New Zealanders are in the service sector these days. So what we've seen is a contraction of the primary sector in terms of the jobs, still very significant for the New Zealand economy, and of the manufacturing sector. A lot of the goods that we buy are manufactured overseas and imported to New Zealand. And what we've seen, as most countries have seen, is a move to these service jobs, jobs that are about providing service to others. They might be in health or education. They might be in IT. Uh, they are very significant. The second thing that I need to stress is that in terms of these jobs, many of them require post-secondary education and training, four out of five. So it's very different from the days when you could leave school and, and get a job. And you can certainly get jobs, but many of the jobs you get when you leave school uh, tend often to be what we call precarious. So they're part-time jobs, they're jobs without not a lot of future in them. And so when we look at the jobs that are well paid, uh, that have got longevity, uh, that have got career options, then you almost certainly do need post-secondary education and training. And by the way, I would point out that that does include um, things like apprenticeships. Uh, the, the construction sector is booming um, and we do need many more people trained in construction to help with this country. The thing that really has impacted upon all jobs, and I would stress the all jobs there, is that we are now in the digital age. And we've been forecasting through to the 2030s, so about 10 years out. What we anticipate is that 40% of all jobs that currently exist in New Zealand will not exist in 2031. And that 65% of the jobs that secondary school students will do during their working life have yet to be invented, have yet to be established. So we're going to see a lot of jobs disappear or change. And we're going to see new jobs. So it's not that 40% of jobs will go and there won't be new jobs. There will be new jobs, but they'll be very different from the existing jobs. And the other thing is that you need to anticipate that during your working life, you will do jobs that simply don't exist. Um, what sort of new jobs will appear? Well, this is quite difficult to establish what those new jobs will be. But we do know that many jobs that are, can be changed or replaced by technology will do so. What we'll see is the ongoing development of professional high skill jobs. So those are the people to people jobs that cannot be replaced by machines or technology. Uh, teaching, for example, and, and education more broadly has been a growth sector over the last two decades. Um, what you will anticipate is the need to keep changing the sort of job that you do. So for those of us of my age, 
we've done one job over a lifetime, possibly with only two or three employers. But in the future, the averages that most people entering the labor market in the next few years will do 17 jobs in five different sectors, which means not simply employers, but a completely different sector. So mobility will, very, will be very high. What's needed in this new environment? You will hear this repeatedly, and I'm going to repeat it here. What you need are skills that are transferable over time. You need good commun communication skills and um, literacy. And here I've also included digital literacy. In an age where service jobs dominate, it is people to people communication. It might be one to one, it might be one to many, that is really, really important. Numeracy has always been important and remains important. Um, digital literacy is obviously something that has grown in importance. And we need people to be critical thinkers, not to criticize, but be able to problem solve. And when we talk to employers, these are the sorts of skills that they're looking for. Good presentation, because we're really in an age in which people to people uh, jobs are most important, good communication skills, problem solving, which is the critical thinking, team player. And remember that we're talking about team players in a much more culturally diverse New Zealand or culturally diverse world. What employers look for is evidence of academic performance at secondary school or post-secondary school and at what people have done for non in terms of non-academic activities things like volunteering helping out at the church playing a sport all help and then there's work experience when you have got your qualifications whether they're from Westlake Girls or from somewhere else the other thing that employers will look for is have you been employed by somebody else and what have been those expectations? And what have you, how have you met those expectations? So my final advice is this, explore your options very, very carefully, but ultimately what you should do is follow your passion, not what your friends are doing, not necessarily what your parents tell you to do, but think of the things that really you are very passionate about and follow those. So if I could, talk to parents for a moment here. One of the most difficult things that you will experience as your daughter begins to make a choice is you will need to support her, but not dictate to her. Stand back, help her, make help her make her choices, choices about jobs, choices about education, choices about training. Um, but ultimately, she is going to have to follow through on this and there's one thing that we at university know very, very well, and that is that students who follow their passions succeed, they complete, and they do very well. So please follow your passion. And in all of that, it's a very challenging period to decide what it is you want to do. Good luck with that process, and I hope that you succeed in whatever you choose. Thank you. Kia ora koutou and thank you for joining me. My name is Kitiyon Paseni, Schools and Community Engagement Manager for Waipapa Taumatarau, or the University of Auckland. In this overview, I'm going to go through study options, scholarships, entry requirements, accommodation, pretty much the nuts and bolts of the university. But before I do that, I'd like to take you on a quick tour of some of our campuses.
what you see on the screen are our study programs that offer a range of majors or specializations. A major is a main subject of focus in your degree and takes up about a third of your courses, whereas a specialization is a focus subject area that usually takes up half of your courses. Arts is where students need to pick up two majors unless doing conjuring. You can choose from 40 different majors. Communication offers three different majors, commerce 12 majors, global studies four majors, and science 25 majors. And then the bottom two of engineering and advanced science offer specializations. Engineering having 10 specializations and advanced science 13 specializations. On this slide are our standalone study programs where you don't need to select a major or specialization. It's also important to note that medicine, medical imaging, optometry and pharmacy first year applicants may apply into these programs from either the Bachelor of Health Science or the Bachelor of Science majoring in biomedical science. In other words, you're unable to apply directly into these programs from school. In terms of entry pathway, we recognize that there is no cookie cutter way into university. We welcome any and all students and understand that different pathways are needed to suit different situations. Guaranteed entry pathway is the most direct way after completing your last year of school. I'll touch on this later on. Alternative pathways is where students could apply into backup options and there's an opportunity to transfer later. For example, a student could apply into a Bachelor of Science and later transfer into engineering if they meet the criteria. UTAS is the university's undergraduate targeted admission schemes for eligible Māori and applicants from some equity groups. This is the university's commitment to ensuring we provide equal and equitable opportunities to communities that have been underrepresented in academia and tertiary education due to a number of barriers. And finally, our foundation programs is a pathway to support students who may have not met university entrance or haven't met the admission criteria for their study program and may have been away from school for some time. Our program, such as Tertiary Foundation Certificate, supports the university's belief that anyone capable of studying at tertiary level should be given that opportunity. So how do we guarantee your entry? Depending on your study program, you will have different requirements. University entrance is the minimum requirement to go to any New Zealand university. I recommend discussing this with your teacher at school. Next, we have rank scores. Each study program has a rank score. For students sitting NCA, it is based on your best 80 credits at level three, where achieved credits are worth two points, merit three points, excellence four points. On the screen, you can see all the programs with their rank scores. So if my best 80 credits at level three were all at achieved, my rank score would then be 80 times two, which equals 160 points. Looking at the screen, I could gain admission into programs from the Bachelor of Arts and below, but narrowly miss out on the Bachelor of Science. Subject requirements, the programs that you see on the screen require credits from specific subjects. Please note, Subject requirements only apply to these programs. And additional requirements only apply to the following study programs. An additional requirement could be an interview, audition, written statement, CV, portfolio, and or police check. Please check the specific additional requirement if you're interested in any of the programs you see on the screen. And then finally, the academic English language requirement is to ensure you have sufficient levels of competence in academic English to support your study at university. If you do not meet the requirement through your entrance qualification as outlined on the screen, but otherwise qualify for admission, you can still satisfy the AELR during your first 12 months of study by passing an approved academic English language course. Our first year residences offer you a fantastic student lifestyle with an organized social program of events, as well as academic and partial support. You will have the chance to build lifelong friendships with people from all over Aotearoa, New Zealand and the world. You can apply for a place in any of the following, Grafton Hall, O'Rourke Hall, University Hall Towers, Waipararu Hall and Waipararu Whitaka Block. In Grafton Hall, O'Rourke Hall, Waipararu Hall and University Hall Towers, 
All of your meals are included in your fees and served in the hall dining room. Wurika Block, which forms part of the Waipararu Hall community, is a self-catered residence that our first year residents can opt into a partially or fully catered meal plan at an additionally weekly rate. I recommend checking out our website and getting more information about each of our halls. Applications are open up in August. The University of Auckland offers several hundred scholarships every year to new students embarking on undergraduate study. These scholarships can support you to achieve amazing things in your work and communities. As well as the scholarships funded centrally by the university, individual faculties and generous donors also provide a wide range of scholarships for new undergraduate students. On the screen are some of our main scholarships. We encourage you to apply for all scholarships that you think you might be eligible for. Check details of each scholarship on our website and key dates as well. For more information, be sure to scan the QR code that you see on the screen to register your interest. And from myself and the rest of the team, we thank you for joining us. Be sure to look out for more updates and we wish you all the best for the year ahead. I'll leave you with some of our current students to tell you what it's like to be a University of Auckland student. Mate wa. Hey, my name's Shivani. Hey, I'm Henry. Hey there, I'm Victoria. And I'm a third year population health and psychology student. And I'm a fourth year law and marketing student. And I study sociology and population health here at the University of Auckland. I actually live here at Waipadudu Hall, which means that there isn't far to go to get to campus. Living at Waipadudu also means I'm part of our hall whānau. First up is Psychology 207, Personality and Development. The lecturer is great, very engaging and super approachable. The uni is smack bang in the centre of Auckland, with Chancery Square down there, Auckland Domain up there and the Sky Tower. The Sport and Rec Centre has heaps of equipment and if you don't feel like joining the gym, there's some individual classes so you can still keep active. I'm a resident advisor here at Waipadudu Hall, which means that I help our residents with things ranging from pastoral care to floor engagement. Nice view, right? That's me done for the day. Whew, I'm off home now. Can't wait to do it all again tomorrow. Catch you later. See ya. Kia ora Westlake girls, my name is Jake, I'm from AUT and my job is to help students find the degree that is perfect for them. Everyone is unique with their own interests, skills and talents and so finding the degree that's right for you, it's a decision that only you can make. AUT is one of New Zealand's best universities and we're one of New Zealand's largest universities. We are among the top 1% of universities worldwide and we even rank among the top 50 young universities globally. Our student body is diverse and we have around 30,000 students across our three campuses in Auckland. These are the main campus in the city centre, the north campus on the North Shore and the south campus in Manuko. AUT stands for Auckland University of Technology and as a University of Technology, we are firmly grounded in the 21st century. Our teaching and learning combines practical work with the academic and theoretical underpinning. You'll learn skills that will make you in hot demand globally, and many of our degrees even have a work experience component, like an internship, so that when you graduate, you'll be taking with you not just your university degree, but also industry contacts and real world experience. So today, I want to take you on a tour of our vibrant campuses, the amazing degrees you can study, and the industry level facilities that you'll have access to as a student. The level of degree that you study after high school is called a bachelor's degree. And in many bachelor's degrees, you can choose an area of specialization. This is your major. As we go through the different degrees, you'll see the names of the bachelor's degrees written in bold and the different majors that you can choose from 
are written alongside in smaller letters. Year 13 and deciding what to study is an exciting time and it's a process. The answer won't come to you all at once. We'll be in touch throughout the year, visiting for the Careers Expo and for course planning in Term 3. Along the way, you'll likely have questions that you'd like to ask, and you can easily get in contact with us on social media. We have Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. If you'd like to have a longer conversation about study options and career options, you can book an online course counselling session on our website to talk through the different degrees and career opportunities in detail. We'll be having a range of exciting events on campus to which you are invited. The largest of these is our open day, AUT Live in August. We'll be in touch later in the year with the information and you can also find it on our social media. Year 13 and the run up to university is an exciting time. You have a world of opportunity and adventures ahead of you. So let's dive into our tour of all things AUT and check out the amazing degrees that you can study. Right now, you are facing some of the biggest decisions you'll ever have to make about your future. Starting with where to study. Welcome to AUT. New Zealand's most forward-thinking and modern university in New Zealand's largest and most exciting city, Auckland. Next, you have to figure out what to study. Ask yourself, what are you really into today? Because that passion can help spark what great things you'll choose to study tomorrow. And here at AUT, finding your greatness is what we do. So, do you like solving problems? Are you analytical, mathematical, technical, curious, a knowledge seeker, or interested in shaping how the future looks? Look at what you could do. A Bachelor of Engineering Technology. Complete a Bachelor of Engineering with Honours. A Bachelor of Computer and Information Sciences. Our brand new Bachelor of Architecture and Future Environments. Or our Bachelor of Construction. But what if you're more into creativity, art and design, fashion, making things, taking risks and using your imagination? A Bachelor of Visual Arts could be you, a Bachelor of Design, or a Bachelor of Creative Technologies, where you'll discover our Motion Capture Studio, one of only two international standard studios in the country. Now, maybe you're into expressing yourself through speaking or writing, or you love media and advertising, then take a look at our Bachelor of Communication Studies. Okay, what if you're entrepreneurial, innovative, like dealing with facts, solving problems, taking charge, challenging and influencing others? Our Bachelor of Business or Bachelor of Laws could be your future. Are you a people person and like to help others? Do you like different languages and cultures, sharing ideas and opinions? There's so much you can do, like our Bachelor of Arts and Māori Development, Bachelor of Arts and Māori Media, or check out our Bachelor of International Hospitality Management and Bachelor of International Tourism Management. If teaching's for you, our Bachelor of Education and Specialty Teaching could be the one. Or open your mind with our wide-ranging Bachelor of Arts degree. Now, are you interested in the way the environment works? Are you naturally curious? logical, analytical, and organized. Then explore our Bachelor of Science or Bachelor of Medical Laboratory Science. Lastly, maybe you're really into health and physical fitness, how the body works and helping others. You'll be pumped with our Bachelor of Sport and Recreation and Bachelor of Health Science with clinical and non-clinical majors. So, have you seen something to help you find your greatness? That's the great thing about AUT. There's something for everyone, including you. What's next? First, you'll need the right entry qualifications. Check. Now you're ready to go for it at New Zealand's fastest growing and most future-focused university. 
One that offers even more than your dream course. One that has dedicated departments and people to help guide and support you in your studies and career options. One that has world-class university accommodation, right by campus. One that has an amazing student life. One that has over 5,000 industry contacts here and all around the globe to give you a taste of real life while you study. And one that can open up a world of opportunities when you graduate. Are you ready to find your greatness? Unitech's Environmental and Animal Sciences programs will prepare students for an exciting and rewarding career caring for animals, protecting our natural environment, or helping to solve environmental issues. We're passionate about making a difference and shaping the world we live in. From civil engineering to quantity surveying, our programs are highly informed by industry, and are practical, hands-on, interactive, and self-paced. This is an ideal environment to get you familiar with your field before you even step foot into the workplace. Based at our Waitakere campus, we offer programs in nursing, medical imaging, social work, and community development. And our core focus is on creating positive whānau and community change through wellness and modern healthcare. We offer the best of both worlds, providing hands-on practical experience modelled off industry while ensuring you're backed by the theory to get you through. From pre-apprenticeship to apprenticeship and beyond, we've got you sorted. We teach a range of programs, both in early childhood and sport, exercise and recreation, and we're committed to making a positive difference in the health and well-being of the communities we serve. Become an engineer if you want to use science and maths to improve the world. We connect you with industry professionals and give you the right balance of practical and theoretical learning. From automotive engineering civil engineering, electrical and electronics engineering, and land surveying, we've got you sorted. At the School of Computing, Electrical and Applied Technology, we like solving problems, from better security for computer networks to more effective business software. Our computing courses keep pace with the constantly evolving technology. We're 
passionate about enhancing the world around us to be smart, innovative, sustainable, and inspiring. Drawing on science, history, art, and modern technology, we look at how we can revitalize and restore the spaces around us. Students and staff take part in collaborative projects with practicing professionals and clients, including award-winning architects, urban designers, and landscape architects. Our foundation and bridging programs reflect a range of vocational pathways that give students skills and opportunities to get to where they want to go, including biodiversity, nursing, architecture, business, social work, sport recreation and exercise, screen arts and art and design. Our core fields of study are accounting, management, and marketing. In this pathway, we prepare our students to have a sound understanding of the principles and practices in real-world business settings with a focus on their chosen field of expertise. Our focus is on developing the creative, technical, critical, and entrepreneurial skills that students need to succeed in the creative industries. Kia ora mai tato. No mai haere mai ki te whare wānanga o Waikato. At the University of Waikato, we are more than just a place for education. We are a community, a place of belonging and connection, a place where you matter. Ko te tangata, for the people is who we are. Our two vibrant campuses in Hamilton and Tauranga are located in New Zealand's fastest growing cities, close to beautiful beaches, mountains, lakes and nearby cities. At Waikato, we have smaller class sizes, which means accessible lecturers. With a wide range of student support services and student clubs, you'll have fun, make new connections, and build lifelong friendships. Our flexible degree structure means you can study a broad range of subjects to create a qualification that matches your individual strengths and career aspirations. If you are passionate about planning for the future of Aotearoa, study a Bachelor of Social Science majoring in Environmental Planning and Māori and Indigenous Studies. Or if you want to make a difference to our planet, study for a Bachelor of Climate Change, the first of its kind in the world. If you aspire to be our future Prime Minister, study a Bachelor of Communications majoring in Public Relations and Political Science. The theory you learn in the classroom will be put into practice in work experience opportunities. Each year, through our extensive network and industry connections, Waikato students go on more than 2,000 work placements and internships. We support student success, and each year we offer hundreds of scholarships worth millions of dollars to fund study and expenses. Waikato has some of the most affordable student accommodation in the country, with a range of options both on and off campus. There are three fully catered halls for first-year students on our Hamilton campus, all a short walk from lecture theatres and the on-campus gym, shops and cafes. Our Tauranga campus has new self-catered hall and is a six-minute walk from campus, located in the heart of the CBD. With so many wonderful adventures ahead, we look forward to welcoming you to Waikato in the future. Kia ora, my name is Madison and I'm a student recruitment advisor for Massey University.
My role at the university is to come out and talk to students that are thinking about going to university and want to know a little bit more about Massey and what we offer. We're also here to help you throughout the year if you need help with enrollment, um, if you need help with your application, or if you just have any general university questions. So today we're going to explain a little bit about what Massey has to offer, um, our accommodation, our scholarships, the locations, and then obviously um, what subjects and where you can find those on our website. So Massey University has what we call four locations. We have three physical locations and then we have distance. So we have a location in Auckland, one in Palmerston North and one in Wellington. For our Auckland campus, um, it's on the North Shore. It's located in Albany, close to, close to the Westfield Albany Mall. There's plenty of parking on campus, so um, and it's free at the moment as well. So if you are thinking about driving to university, that won't be an issue at all. Um, it's home to our business and construction schools, as well as a few other subjects. Our second location is Manawatu, our Palmerston North campus. So this is our original campus. It's Massey's oldest campus. Um, it obviously is in Manawatu and Palmerston North, which is a little bit quieter. So if you're looking to get out of the city and you want to go and live a little bit of a quieter, uh, real student lifestyle, then um, Massey University in Palmerston North might be the place for you. It's home to our veterinary science school, agriculture and our aviation school. Um, obviously those aren't the only subjects down there, but those are the schools that also are housed down there. Our third campus is our Wellington campus. So um, this is right in the heart of Wellington City. It's close to pre plenty of great cafes, bars, restaurants, those kinds of things. And it is home to our College of Creative Arts. So um, if you're into arts and design, then Wellington obviously might be the place for you. Our fourth campus is our distance campus. So, so distance means that um, all your lectures are loaded online, the tutorials are online, and pretty much it just gives you the flexibility. For example, if it's best for you to do a class at 8 p.m. at night, then that's when you are able to do it. Uh, the thing about our distance campus is it just means that it can suit you and you can, you're still able to do things like work if you're playing sport um, or if you have to travel anywhere overseas, you are still able to do your um, degree by a distance. So these are the Massey University scholarships that are available um, Massey wide. So these aren't the only scholarships available, but these are the ones that are specific to Massey University. So down the bottom, massey.ac.nz forward slash scholarships is when you'll be able to, uh, is where you'll be able to see the scholarships uh, that Massey has to offer. So um, the big thing for us is that students often say, oh, I'm not smart enough, why don't have the best grades? Now, not all these scholarships are reliant on your grades. Some definitely are, but the other ones aren't. And the biggest thing for us is that if you don't apply for scholarships, then you're never going to get them. For your scholarships, you are going to need references. So it's important to think about who you might like to ask to be your reference. So it can't be mum or dad, it can't be a family member. Um, we recommend that it's someone from your school and normally your school does have a process for who um, will write your scholarships. We encourage you to reach out to them early because as you know, there may be a lot of senior students that want scholarship um, references. So give your teachers enough time to be able to do those. The second key point is to make sure you know when the scholarship applications open and close. So our opening dates are normally around August. Um, so it's important that you do check out those dates. Um, the other places that you're able to look for scholarships are Money Hub um, and Generosity. So um, these two websites uh, house a whole lot of scholarships that aren't just related to the university. So there's things like um, there's things like cultural ones, there's um, church group ones, there's EWE ones, there's all sorts of different scholarships. So once you've done one application, you can pretty much use that application across the board. So um, I mean, we always say if you can spend time on Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, put an hour aside. Um, early on in the year and do work on your scholarship because like we said it's pretty much just free money that's going to pay for your scholarship uh, sorry it's going to pay for your university now and then later on you won't have to think about paying off your student loan. Cool so Massey also offers accommodation so we have Massey halls on all three campuses so we have um, one in Auckland, Palmerston North and obviously Wellington depending on where you want to stay or what university um, location you're looking at going will determine uh, what kind of living situations there are available. So some have um, single rooms, we do also have twin rooms that you share and then there's flatting situations where you share a bathroom and kitchen but there's three or four bedrooms um, within there. Also for example if you're looking at going down to Palmerston North 
in your first year, you do have to take the catered option. And that's just because of the nature of some of the subjects that are down there. We want to make sure that you guys are eating as well. So massey.ac.nz forward slash accommodation. You can actually go there and uh, take virtual tours so you can see what kind of um, room you would like and what would be best suited to you. Now the applications open on the 1st of August and then offers go out from the 1st of October. It's really important that you do get your application in if you're thinking about staying at any of these locations and that's because they do fill up. So in order to have um, an offer go out, so you need to make sure you have that application in um, before the 1st of October. And that's purely because if you, uh, if you apply for accommodation after, you actually get put to the bottom of the list and you have to wait for everyone else to decline an offer before you even get a chance at a room. Cool, so now that we've gone over all the um, kind of things that Massey has to offer, obviously now we have a whole lot of subjects and a whole lot of degrees that are available to you. So we have five different colleges at Massey University and under the colleges, colleges are where your degrees sit. So I'm gonna show you now um, on the website where you can go to actually look at these um, and get more information about each of the subjects. So if you go to study, all qualification lists, and then this will bring up a, a list of all the different programs and degrees that are available to you. So you'll be looking um, either at certificates, diplomas, or what most uh, school leavers look at are bachelor degrees. So these are the different bachelors that you can take that are offered under Massey University, and then obviously under the different degrees is where you'll find majors and minors are. So they're areas that you can uh, specialize in within your degree. Secondly to this, if you head to massey.ac.nz forward slash info evenings, or if you just come over here to search and put in information evenings or info evenings, You'll also be able to see all the details and all the recordings about specific subjects from our last year's information evening. So this one just here that says massive information evenings. And then you can scroll down and you can see the event recordings. So on uh, within that, you can actually watch the different events um, and the different recordings we had from last year's information evening. Obviously, this was also a very brief description of um, what things we have at Massey and where to find them. So um, below here, you'll be able to see is um, my email address and contact details. So if you have any questions um, that you'd like to follow up with or if you're interested in studying at Massey, you can always speak to your careers advisors and they have my details. Otherwise, you're more than happy to, uh, I'm more than happy for you to email or message me at any stage if you do need help. Later on in the year, if you are looking at coming to Massey, we will come back out and we will do a course planning session where we help you plan out what your first year is going to look like, what papers you need to take, um, and if there's any special um, things that you need to do. For example, some things do require a police check, others have personal statements and things like that. So like I said, if you need any help between now and then, you're more than welcome to contact me on the details below. Otherwise, um, I'll be able to see you hopefully later on in the year. Thank you, Deb. Tēnā koutou katoa. No mai haere mai ki te hering a waka. Welcome to Victoria University of Wellington. My name is Poe Timbleton and I am a Māori Future Student Advisor here at the University. You are about to embark on a journey where you need to make some pretty tough decisions about your future. And we are here today to talk about what we can offer you here at the hering a waka. But first, let's check out our beautiful capital city that is Wellington. I love Wellington because it's always so full of life. There's so many things to do with my friends. You can think of Wellington as an embodiment of multiple worlds. You can walk from the beach through the city up to Tari Walton Bush in you know, 10 to 15 minutes. There's just something for everyone. We've got the courts around us, parliament, all that kind of thing that really helps the students to get a feel of what we're learning about. I love Wellington, it's such a compact little city. There's always something going on, it's so easy to find something to do. Right from the first time I came to Wellington, I just felt really at home and really safe here. I'm a night owl and at night there's just always something going on, there's always something to do, no matter what time it is. Wellington is quite progressive and really accepting of diversity. 
I think it really helps people to find themselves. What I really like about Wellington is that it's the centre of change. And within that, there are so many game changers. Everyday people getting out there, chasing their passions and making a difference. I really love Wellington. There's always something going on. You can wander into town on any given day and there'll be a show on the waterfront or a comedy festival. You don't really have to plan ahead. Wellington's a really vibrant city. Wellington taught me how to take a stance, question my beliefs, care about things, you know? It's a political town. People fight for the stuff that's important to them. Equality, art, sport, fashion, whatever it is. I love it. My life is so much bigger, more colourful, more interesting now. Student life. It's important that we are embracing this part of your journey at Te Hiringa Waka, Victoria University of Wellington, where you not only grow as an individual, a young adult or a student, but also a professional too. We have over 130 clubs and societies for everyone, whether it's interests in political, cultural, social, environmental, there is something here for you. It is a place where you can make lifelong connections and friendships. And even to date, I've made some good friends over my time here at Te Ringa Waka, Victoria University of Wellington. We have two awesome programs in our leadership space, the Wellington Plus program and also the Wellington Leadership Program too. Now these programs help brush up on your skills, not only to be a better leader, to be a leader that can also be able to um, lead awesome movements in the public sector, sector and also the private sector too. Now there's also the Wellington Global Exchange Program that you need to be um, aware of and you'll get more information about that later. At your time here at Te Waka Victory University of Wellington, it is important that we look after you and support you. That's why our university have a number of different support services to help you in your academic journey. A few ones that I want to highlight for you is student learning. This is an awesome group of people and a unit here at the university to help support you in your academic writing, your critical thinking, your analytical thinking, and also things like grammar, paraphrasing, and so forth, how to articulate the questions that is in your essays or also in your assessments. Those are some key foundational skills for you to thrive at the university. We also have some wonderful services in our student health area, Manawa Ora, Modi Ora. Student health and wellbeing is really important to our university. Why is that? Because we want you guys to be healthy in the spiritual area, the physical area, the mental area, and also the emotional area as well. So we have doctors, nurses, counseling services here for you to be on that journey with you so they can help guide you so you can become healthy and also you're healthy in the way that you approach your studies. Now we also have careers and employment. So anytime that you're thinking about, okay, what am I gonna do with my qualification? Am I brushing up on this certain skill set or that certain skill set? Now it's really important that you guys connect with careers and employment. It's, on a, it's a bigger department as to what you currently have at your school, but we have a range of careers consultants that can sit down with you and talk you through some employability skills and also how to brush up on job interview and also your CV and how that's looking as well. Don't leave those conversations to the end of your degree. Always encourage to be connecting with them, you know, throughout your time, first year, second, third year and so forth. Now, the beauty about living here in the capital city, the 04 at your door, come and explore, is this. We have a range of different work experiences for you to get amongst. Now, the, the awesome thing about this is that you are well connected to a global space here in Wellington. Now, you may be able to gain some experiences working for government or working for some private organizations or working for the top four firms you will be able to connect with them on the daily. Now, it's really important that you think about that during your time here at the university. Also, too, we have internships. We want you guys to be able to gain this work experience whilst doing your qualification. So you're thinking about the theoretical, but also the practical, too. And putting those two together, you'll be a strong graduate when you leave this university. You'll be employable. You have skills that are going to be able to stretch and open your eyes to many more things to come your way. We want you to get connected to these spaces. We want you to know that the student life here at Te Waka, Victoria University of Wellington, is the best. 
And it's important that we are able to journey through together, make some good connections, talk to people about your journey, and, you know, welcome on your um, families and communities in this new chapter that you're embarking on. We look forward to seeing you more. Thank you. Here at Tahiringa Waka, we offer 14 different accommodation buildings for you. Most of our accommodation blocks are based in the Wellington Central, and this allows an easy commute for you to get to your studies. Nine of our accommodation halls are catered, so for those who are just transitioning out of high school, this is an easy option for you to allow you to take some time off your back, take the stress off, and let our staff cater your three meals a day. Now, living in the halls is an opportunity you do not want to miss out on. We have amazing support staff on there. We have our resident advisors, our students that live on site. We also have our student support coordinator to also help students while being along the year, as well as our admin team, our deputy head of hall, and also our head of hall as well to look after you on your journey with us. Now, we do have rooms that range from single rooms through to apartment blocks and everything else in between. So there will be something that we can try find for you to allow you to find your space, find your study zone and find what works best for you, okay? Now, applications do open on from the 1st of August. Um, and so you will need to keep an eye out for those emails that will come through about how to apply and when to finish applying, just to make sure you get into that cutoff date, all right? Accommodation is an amazing experience. And it is a place where you can find your community. It is a place where you can find yourself. And it is a chance to make some amazing memories here at Victoria University of Wellington to heading a walker. Now, when it comes to choosing subjects at university level, that can be quite a big challenge. We offer over 130 different subjects to choose from. Now, when you pick your subject, it doesn't necessarily need to be paired with a subject that's similar or relevant to that subject. So this gives you a huge range of diversity to create and design your degree from the ground up. If you're interested in something like biology, but you also really enjoy maybe the creative arts, you could do a biology and a theatre combination under a single degree. We're going to learn a little bit more about how degrees work and majors in a little bit, but I thought it's a good chance to talk about choosing those subjects and where to start your thought in this year 13 uh, period. Now, when you are selecting those subjects, it can be helpful to think about themes or maybe a career progression or an area that you'd like to focus on in the future. These four themes that you can see next to me are what we use to navigate those conversations later in the year when it comes time to choose. Something like leadership can mean a lot of different things to different people. A leader in some sense might be in terms of the commerce area. It could be looking at entrepreneurship, or going in to become a CEO in your business. In other areas, you might be thinking of leadership in terms of communication, getting the message across as a leader to those that need it. It might be political, it might be international relations. So having that theme area can help us to then guide you around subjects that you might be interested in researching more throughout 2022. Other subjects like creativity, you might be interested in our design, our architecture, maybe theatre, maybe uh, film. Those different paths can help us as well to then decide what your skills are, what you'd like to use them for, or even how we might bring in electives to keep your university studies fun and lively throughout those three years. Lastly, when we're thinking about degrees, it can be a little confusing thinking what degree is going to work best for you. We've got a little bit of a video to help you with that in a second, uh, but I just want you to keep an open mind about picking your subjects first, and that will help us decide the degree that suits you best. But here's a little bit more information about those degrees. Kia ora. When you begin your undergraduate studies at Te Heringa Waka, Victoria University of Wellington, you'll be working towards a bachelor's degree. You can create a program of study to include subjects that you enjoy. So, how does a degree work? Throughout your degree, you will take courses. In your first year, you will normally take 100 level courses only. Some degrees have core courses that all students must complete. Each course is worth 15 or 20 points. To pass a course, you need to complete a number of different assessments throughout the trimester. When you pass the course, you earn points towards your degree. To complete your degree, you will need to earn 360 points over three years of full-time study. Degrees in law, engineering, and midwifery take four years of full-time study. A major is your main subject. Each year, you will take courses related to your major. To complete a major, you have to take certain courses at 100, 200, and 300 level. Some degrees allow you to have two majors within one degree. 
Doing a double major doesn't add extra time to your degree, it just adds more structure to your program of study. A minor is like doing a major, but with fewer courses, particularly in your second and third years. Some degrees allow minors. You can take elective courses if you have space in your degree program. Elective courses can be from other subject areas you are interested in. Here at the university, we offer different types of degrees. Some degrees are flexible, such as the Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Commerce, and Bachelor of Science. Under a flexible degree, it is possible to do a double major. Some degrees are structured, meaning there are a number of courses you must take. Under a structured degree, you normally do one major. A conjoint degree is when you do two degrees at the same time. Some of the courses you complete will count towards both degrees, which saves time. Not all degrees can be done conjointly. If you think you're ready to choose your program of study, head over to our website and have a look at our undergraduate degrees. Hopefully the degree video has given you an understanding on how our degrees work. In order to be accepted into any of the bachelor's degree at the university, as a school leaver, you will need to meet the admissions requirement. You will need to gain university entrance and also meet any specific program requirements as well. If you are applying with NCEA, the standard UE requirements apply. You will need to achieve at least 14 credits in at least three UE approved subjects. And you will also need to meet the literacy and numeracy requirements as well. If you are applying with Cambridge International Examinations, you will need to achieve at least 120 points on the New Zealand tariff in A or AS level in any syllabus groups which are broadly equivalent to NCEA subjects. If you are applying with International Baccalaureate, you will need to gain the full diploma of 24 points minimum. If you are not doing any of these qualifications, please get in touch with us and we'll be able to advise you on what your admission hut would be. Now, for those of you who are looking at the Bachelor of Midwifery, please bear in mind that there is additional admissions requirement that you will need to follow. And for those of you who are looking at sciences subjects like chemistry, physics, mathematics, and even engineering, please have a look at the prerequisites for these subjects as well. Now, you will need to apply by the deadline, so let's have a chat about the key dates. Now to wrap up today, we wanted to cover off a couple of key dates to keep in mind for this year. The first one is scholarships. They'll open up from uh, mid-June this year, so make sure that you keep an eye out for what those are on offer and what ones you may be eligible for. The next key date is if you're interested in our Bachelor of Music, especially in the performance category, you'll need to book in an audition with us. So that will open up from July. The last key date we wanted to highlight is our big day of the year, which is our open day. That's on the 26th of August, and we look forward to welcoming students from across the motu down to our campuses here in Wellington. I just want to say thank you for watching this video today. We hope you've got the information you need. And from all the future students team here in Wellington and Auckland, we wish you uh, all the best for your planning for 2023. Kia ora students of Westlake Girls, my name is Bart and it's my job to give you an introduction to New Zealand's fastest growing university, Te Whare Wananga o Waitaha, the University of Canterbury. Do keep in mind that this is just a small taster of everything that's on offer for you and I know that there's a lot that goes into a big decision like this. So if you do watch the video and have some questions, please contact me with them. It's also a great idea to register your interest by filling out our stay in touch form on our website. That way I can keep you up to date with all of the upcoming events this year, as well as deadlines in the application process. So a big part of our recent growth has been more students like yourself from Tamaki Makoto making the move to UC. To start the video off, I'll show you the best bits about Ototahi Christchurch and our campus that have been a big part of people's decision making. Then we'll look at the halls of residence that you'll probably be staying in as a first year before we look at some highlights from our most popular degrees. We'll finish the video by checking out some of the amazing scholarships that are on offer for you, as well as key dates to keep in mind as we move forward this year. I'll be the one helping you throughout the year with the whole application process, with course planning, 
maximizing your chance of getting one of those awesome scholarships, and just generally answering any questions you might have. So again, please get in contact with me. Please reach out if you have any questions, um, especially if you want to, more, uh, want to know more uh, about a particular degree. All right, so let's talk about Christchurch. It's actually Aotearoa's second biggest city. That means when you study at UC, you get to experience all of the connectivity, the convenience, the diversity, and the vibrancy that you would expect from a major center. Also has a really strong sense of community, and it's a city that's embraced the innovation and the imagination that has been needed to constantly reinvent itself. There's always something new and exciting for you to go and check out in and around the city. Christchurch is also a fantastic home base if you want to go and explore the beautiful South Island. If you are into doing outdoorsy things in your spare time, or even if you just need a break from study, you've got fantastic surf beaches 20 minutes away from campus, you've got hiking trails, you've got mountain biking trails, um, and you've also got ski fields just under two hours drive away. Zooming in a little bit on the UC campus itself, something you might not realize is we're one of only two fully self-contained residential campuses in the country. That means you'll find our halls and lecture theaters all just a short stroll from each other in the suburb of Islam. There's more to it than just being able to practically roll out of bed straight into class. The space is lush and green with two streams running through it. And there's something special about being immersed in uni life like this. You see people all around studying on the grass or using the facilities, and there's a huge sense of ownership that our students get. This is your slice of the city. It's a great way to connect with like-minded people and find your tribe. If you've made it at least this far through the video, then making the move down to Christchurch and taking a bit of a leap of faith is something you are at least considering. If it is something that has piqued your interest, then I want to take a second to encourage you to look at this option seriously. You can gain valuable real-world skills by embracing your independence at this stage of your journey. We work closely with employers in our region for internships and research projects, and something we hear often from them is when they're interviewing graduates, they can always tell the difference between someone that left home for their first year of uni and someone that didn't. They prefer the people that left home for their first year for their maturity and their initiative. Um, I didn't leave my home city for my first year of uni, I didn't go into a hall of residence, and it's something that I definitely regret. In fact, I ended up flatting in my first year, and I spent the equivalent of the cost of a fully catered hall um, on rent alone. So if it's something we can plan for, prepare for, and set you up to take advantage of, um, then that is awesome. Halls are a great option to transition to uni life. Uh, you've got dedicated uh, and down-to-earth residential assistants looking out for you. Uh, you've got um, tutorials to help you with the academic side of things. Um, and there's social events and they're just all around a great place to go and meet new people and make some lifelong friends. Now to the learning. So there's way more options to cover in terms of degrees and courses than I can do justice to in this video, um, but we will take a look at some of the highlights from around the uni. First up, we've got our Bachelor of Arts. This degree is super broad, very flexible, and what this allows you to do is focus on learning about the subjects that you are really interested in. And you gain transferable skills in uh, research, critical thinking, and teamwork while you're at it. One of the things that sets the BA at UC apart is our PACE program. This program gives you the opportunity to uh, gain an internship or some sort of employment experience out in the community and have this work credited towards your degree. We've got a Bachelor of Communications, which is really digital and social media driven. This will give you all the skills you need to compellingly put your ideas across no matter what circumstance you're in. We've got the only Bachelor of Criminal Justice in the entire country. Um, we put this degree together in collaboration with the police, with the Ministry of Justice, with the Department of Corrections, and it gives you a 360 degree look at the way we treat the people on the margins of our society. Uh, we've got a law school which is renowned across the country uh, for being taught by the people who write the textbooks. We've got a business school which is one of just 108 Triple Crown accredited schools across the world. What this means for you is uh, the Bachelor of Commerce at UC is a great option if you want to take your talents overseas once you graduate. 
you know that it will be really highly regarded uh, and very highly recognized. Next, we've got our Bachelor of Science. So Canterbury is known as being a li living laboratory. And to celebrate this and embrace this, we've got more field stations than any other uni. You get plenty of chances to go out and learn by doing and some fantastic facilities, uh, including a $256 million science building at the heart of our campus. We've got the Mount John Observatory up in the Southern Alps if you are into astronomy. Uh, next up, while we're talking about science, we've got our Bachelor of Environmental Science. This is the only accredited four-year professional degree in New Zealand on the subject. So if you want to go out and make a difference through science to this generational crisis that we are facing, um, then take a look at this degree. If you're not so much into the science, but you still want to make an impact in this area, uh, take a look at our Bachelor of Social and Environmental Sustainability. This is a growing area where you can really make your mark, and it's somewhere that businesses and companies are really looking to invest in strongly right from the start. And last but not least, we've got our Bachelor of Engineering. This is another four-year degree, and if you are thinking about engineering, then by now you already know that we are fantastic at what we do. We're really proud of our School of Engineering across the board. Uh, there's fantastic gadgets and labs for you to have uh, to mess around with throughout your degree. In particular, our civil and structural engineering is ninth ranked in the world. But engineering does cover a whole range of things from robots to software uh, to forest engineering. And throughout all of these, the culture is fantastic and, some, uh, and really supportive, including an active women in engineering society with some pretty slick merch, if that's your thing. And finally, Fano, the last thing we'll talk about today is scholarships. We have a range of scholarships available for a whole range of categories. Uh, one thing to note is these are based on your year 12 results. So all of that has been and gone. Um, but one thing we can change is how well you represent what you've done. So in order to maximize your chances of gaining one of these fantastic scholarships, I'll be running some seminars, some webinars in July, where I'll give you some examples of bad scholarship applications of good ones and work through what you've got down. Um, one scholarship that I do want to bring your attention to in particular is the Go Waitaha Scholarship. This is available exclusively to students like yourself from Auckland or Wellington. It'll give you $5,000 off your accommodation fees, but more importantly, uh, there's some great professional development opportunities, some group activities, uh, and some fully paid trips to go swimming with dolphins, uh, rafting or skiing throughout the year, so you really get a, a great sense of what it means to be at UC. If you're interested in hearing more about the University of Canterbury, then be sure to join us for one of our info evenings. We've got one at North Harbour Stadium on the 15th of June and one in Auckland Central on the next night, the 16th. If you can't make it to either of those, we've got a virtual info evening too on the 7th of July. But probably most importantly out of this whole video, it's crucial that you try before you buy. So we've got our Ra Tomini Open Day, uh, our UC Open Day on Friday the 9th of September. We open the whole campus up for you to come take a look, see if you can see yourself succeeding at UC and if you match the vibe of campus. Um, we've got guided tours of the facilities by current students and lecturers. We've got talks on each subject. We've got guided tours of the halls of residence, uh, and we've got guided tours of the entire campus. We know that this date can be niggly as it is during term time. Uh, so if you can't make it down for that, then we've got guided tours most Fridays during term time. Uh, and we also have a bunch of dates during the July school holidays. That's a great chance for you to bring your whanau along, bring a group of friends, uh, take a look, maybe go on a ski trip and take a look at what Christchurch has on offer for you. Okay team, thank you for listening to all of that information. Don't forget to register your interest with the stay in touch form if you wanna keep up to date. Um, and again, if you have absolutely any questions, I'd love to hear from you. Send me a text, give me an email, book an appointment, uh, or give me a call and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Kakite.
Hi everybody, thanks so much for having me. My name is Cindy and I'm your student liaison officer for Lincoln University. Today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about what it's like to study at Lincoln. We're around 20 to 25 minutes away from the CBD of Christchurch and about 20 minutes away from the airport. We have seven halls of residence with around 500 beds that our first years occupy and we also have around 200 beds throughout our different flats on campus. What sets us apart from other universities is that while you study, you get hands-on practical experience that allows you to gain those invaluable direct connections, working and collaborating with industry, working in research facilities or directly on the land. And some of our programs have field days every two weeks. We also have our own research hubs and they're linked to and surrounded by other research hubs. You won't face the dilemma of leaving university and not knowing what to do next because you get the experience you need to succeed in the industry. It's not who you know, it's who knows you. And Lincoln is all about making those connections and networking with industry professionals. Join us at Lincoln and get ready to meet the demand for qualified professionals. Lincoln offers world-class facilities for research and learning. Lecturers who know you by name, dedicated wellbeing and support staff, and practical learning experiences to connect you with the industry before you even complete your degree. I chose to study at Lincoln University because it had the additional major of parks and outdoor recreation and other environmental degrees that I'm interested in. What I enjoy about Lincoln is small campus size and approachable lecturers. I chose Lincoln for its sports scholarships and it also offers um, food science, which I'm really interested in. I've enjoyed studying at Lincoln because one, it's highly academic and a great course. And secondly, the social aspect of the Lincoln University is incredible. Lincoln is special because the students get a hands-on experience at the same time as learning the theory for their discipline. I feel this really sets them up well for a career in whatever industry they choose. Students should come to Lincoln if they really want their degree to mean something. If they want to do a science degree and they want to align that degree with New Zealand's biggest, most important industry. One of the other things you learn well at Lincoln is how to engage and understand uh, multiple perspectives and we work often in small classes so that you're able to debate and learn from one another. At Lincoln, you're not just another number. We get to know your name and to know who you are. If we think about what future careers could be and what shortages we may have in the future, I think one of them will be proposing solutions to add value to the current food production. There will be more and more opportunities for science graduates, even outside the traditional scientific jobs. Horticulture is a vital part of New Zealand's future. There's a number of areas that students could go into, vegetable and fruit production, nursery production and so forth, and the future is bright for any students qualifying from here. The agricultural industry needs people who can think People who can understand the first principles of how plants grow, how animals grow, how we put production systems together, how we integrate those into the environment. At Lincoln, environment and sustainability is at the core of what we do. Our staff are very engaged in these issues and have a really broad uh, range of experience and knowledge. So when we talk to food companies and food industries, they often ask us for graduates who have expertise in different areas, of, especially for food production, because it's very diverse. Our students go into a range of careers in both the public and private sectors, and they make a big difference in their communities and to the environment. What makes Lincoln special for students studying here is the uh, number of field trips they go on and the practical hands-on training in the labs. Once I finish study at Lincoln University, I'd love to start my own orchard. After I finish my study at Lincoln, I want to use my food science degree and maybe go into nutrition, um, continue to play basketball and maybe own a gym. After Lincoln, I'm planning on going to the arable agronomy field and studying crop science. When I finish my degree, I'd like to work in the environmental sector on cultural and sustainable issues. Join us at Lincoln and get ready to meet the demand for qualified professionals. 
As you can see, we offer a range of areas of specialisation programs here at Lincoln University. A few important points to remember. All of our programs have elective subjects that you can take to cater to your interests. Your lecturers are more than happy to help you plan your degrees. Lincoln University has a six point higher graduation employment rate, which means that finishing a diploma, course or degree at Lincoln makes you 6% more employable compared to other universities. We are the 15th ranked smallest university in the world, meaning that your experience is more personalised. We have a wraparound service for academic and non-academic support. And something that is very unique to Lincoln is our open doors policy. That means that you have access to all of the lecturers at the university if they are not in lectures or meetings. We network with industry, giving you fantastic opportunities to apply what you've been learning through the practical work. It's a no brainer and it puts you steps ahead, giving you industry driven qualifications. And many of our graduates are highly sought after because they are work ready. The New Zealand's university entrance qualification is the minimum requirement to qualify for admission to a bachelor's degree or to some of our diplomas. So not getting UE does not mean that you are excluded from coming to Lincoln University. We also have pathway options, so definitely get in touch with us to find out more. Lincoln University's Te Waihora campus is nestled in the heart of New Zealand's South Island with 58 hectares of park-like grounds providing a safe, all-inclusive environment. It's the beating heart of one of the world's highest ranked small universities. Around 600 students live on campus each year and we have six halls of residence as well as flatting complexes and some houses. Students who choose catered accommodation dine at Takata Ika, Food and Function Centre, which also houses Mrs O's, where you can grab a coffee and lunch, as well as a beer. The grounded student space is the social hub of campus, a vibrant spot where you can meet friends, have a snack or visit Lusa to use their services. Our sporting grounds host top quality sport, as well as our annual garden party. Your student levy includes a membership to access classes and fantastic gym facilities at the nearby recreation centre. Students with a range of interests and backgrounds will find clubs and associations to meet their needs. Te Whare Kotahi is the cultural home of our Māori and Pacifica students. The Ivy Library, a state-of-the-art facility, encased in a heritage facade which dates from the first days of Lincoln, offers an extensive collection as well as computer access, meeting rooms and a selection of teaching services on offer to help with your studies. We have a range of teaching spaces, from small rooms to large lecture theatres, with new facilities under construction to provide an even better campus experience. We hope you enjoyed your quick virtual tour. Book a real life tour to find out more about the campus that generations of former students fondly look back on as they remember their Lincoln day. Thank you for letting me speak to you today. I hope you now have a better idea about our courses at Lincoln University. Remember, I am your first point of contact. Um, if any of you are interested in applying to our university, all for our scholarships that you can find on our Lincoln website. I am more than happy to reply to your all queries. Just send me an email. And don't forget to fill out our Keep in Touch forms. We give out spot prizes for these. And these are for those of you who would like some more information about attending Lincoln University or would like me to come and help you plan your pathway entry into Lincoln. Thank you again for allowing me to present to you today and don't forget to get in touch.